Hi, I'm Talia Stroud from the Engaging News Project at the University of Texas at Austin. And to start with, I would like you to think about the ideal journalism world. And maybe you'll think about Woodward and Bernstein working to expose government corruption. But this couldn't be farther from the truth of what's actually happening in newsrooms. It's not working for months and months on some particular story. It's thinking about SEO and getting it out right away and what are we going to do next. And there are real reasons that journalism has changed so dramatically. This chart is not going to be news to anyone in this room. As traditional legacy outlets have seen their advertising revenue decline, online news advertising has not come in to replace the losses. And so what's a journalism organization to do? Well, one solution might be, I went with puppies instead of cats, but one solution might be the puppy slideshow. This will get more page views, so this would be a great solution for newsrooms, but it goes against the general business model of let's provide people with the news. Another suggestion might be, why don't we play into partisan politics? After all, if you get a story up on the Daily Coast or up on Drudge Report, you'll see a huge jump in terms of page views. So let's play into that partisan politics. I think that both of these, puppy slideshow or playing into partisan politics, are truly a difficult issue because it makes democratic goals and business goals conflict with one another. And I don't think these two goals necessarily have to conflict. So what I'd like to suggest is six ways in which we might think about problems and solutions. So first problem, a lot of news organizations are using polls on their sites. And these are a terrible practice because who knows who participates? Who knows what happens on these? And you should not use them as a basis for information. So maybe instead of polls, we could use quizzes. And our research at the Engaging News Project shows that quizzes can both inform and entertain audiences. And new formats like sliders can really help them out. So we think that this is one way in which you can meet both business and entertainment and informational objectives. Second. When's the last time you went to a comment section and thought, oh my gosh, so civil. That discourse was amazing. Yet yeah, probably hasn't been a while. So how can we address incivility in comment sections? Well, we partnered with a news organization on a random subset of days. We had a journalist engage in the comment section. And on a random subset of days, we had no one engage in the comment section. We evaluated the comments. And when the journalist was engaging, the comments were more civil and people provided more evidence. Another issue, partisanship cropping up in our comment sections. They're almost designed in a way to make people think about partisanship. But are there ways in which we could design comment sections to get people to think in a different frame of mind? Well, one way, I think, is if we move away from the like button. Because like signals competition and like signals partisanship. Why not respect? Our research shows that respect buttons actually lead people to click on comments that they disagree with politically. Another issue, problem number four, limited participation in comment sections. Of people that hit a site, only a subset actually go and participate in the comment section. So what can we do to try to get more people participating? Well, one potential solution might be redesigning the comment section. So what if you took a New York Times sort of approach and had three columns where people set a position first? Well, it turns out that this, in fact, increases the rate of commenting in comparison to a single stream of comments. So why don't we think more deeply about ways to change this space? Another issue is a focus on problems. And Solutions Journalism Network has done a great job of emphasizing how we focus on all sorts of problems, government inefficiency, insufficient infrastructure, problems overseas. Well, maybe instead of this, we should do more of a focus on solutions like they suggest. Indeed, our research shows that a focus on solutions brings people back to the site more, makes them more engaged, and informs them about problems that are happening in their communities. So our sixth problem here is limited page views, limited learning. People come to your site, click on only one page. How are they really going to learn very much? So might there be ways to redesign a home page to try to get people to click on more links and learn more? So we did a test where we redesigned a home page and compared the two, randomly assigned people to receive one of the two versions. Turns out that this streamlined version got people to click on more pages, and those who clicked on more pages learned more. So we think that there are so many different design ways to try to address some of the problems that we face in newsrooms. Lessons learned so far. First, even small changes can matter. A respect button matters. Two, testing provides really valuable information. And third, we really hope that academic research can work with the journalism world to really find out what solutions work and try to bring together these business and democratic goals so that we can all learn how to maximize both. Thank you.